Good evening. Uh, James Strauss, N 1517 Meadow Ridge Circle, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Basically, I wanted to talk about 2002, the provision to change the rules with respect to liquor licenses. And then I wanted to talk briefly about Carvetti slash Northsiders and what's going on there. First of all, I think it's a mistake in reading 2002 where we designate the police chief as the authority in making decisions about the issuing or having anything to do other than advisory of liquor licenses. I think we have, by the way, probably one of the most wonderful police chiefs any town could have. We won't necessarily always have that uh, as he's planning on retiring in less than two years. The situation is such that we are going around elected and appointed officials on commissions and then this council to make decisions uh, and to allow decisions to be made that are not truly representative since the police chief is not considered a representative of the people in general as the people sitting in front of me here, most of them. Uh, so I think a lot of thought ought to be given whether the distribution of that authority is truly to be made on an intelligent basis and also looking into the future, what might happen if we ended up with a police chief who wasn't so pleasing. As you know, in the state of Wisconsin, it's extremely difficult to replace a police chief. You don't just get to do it. There's all kinds of steps you would have to go through in that process. Um, secondly, um, with respect to Gar Car Carvetti's Northsiders, um, one thing to say, the complaint about this was filed by a sitting member of a commission, and I think that's fine, sitting members of commissions, and you are private citizens, as well as elected or appointed officials. But I would say when it's dealing with a liquor license, and this one would be the expiry of that liquor license and the transfer back to the city because of a failure to stay open for business beyond 90 days, or being closed for 90 days or more. That all meets, you know, I don't know how they proved he wasn't there for 90 days because we watched the place all the time and he would flit in and out. Uh, the owner, the person, Samson Enterprises, that owns it, the guy, um, in order to try to get around that rule. I think, I think getting the license back is, is good. Uh, so something may be done with this, especially in these times right now when maybe drinking isn't such a bad idea. Uh, but I would say that uh, when the commissioner makes this complaint that no commissioner or elected official who makes such a complaint can have any dealings with what happens to that liquor license. And I don't think there's any specifics about that. I saw this happen in the past when a mayor was involved in such a transaction. And by the way, the mayor ended up with the liquor license. I don't think that's fair. It may be legal, but I don't think that's right. And if, if this were to be allowed, if this were to happen, then I would think that you people would have this on your, your, your desk right in front of you to say, if this is likely to happen again, should we not in fact have an ordinance that prevents such a thing? Anyway, thank you for your time. Good evening. First public comment uh, came in from Terry O'Neill, 954 George Street, um, pertaining to agenda item 11, first reading of ordinance 2002, um, saying that this ordinance is relating to designating the issuing authority for the city of Lake Geneva is technically true, but it is misleading and deceptive. One, this ordinance eliminates the required review of the license, finance license and regulation committee. Two, this ordinance eliminates the required approval of the city's county council thus usurping the authority of the city's common council. Three, by doing the above, it also bypasses any input or comments from the public. Four, this makes the chief of police the sole person responsible for the issuing of an alcohol beverage operator license. This allows for misuse of that authority because there's no oversight or questioning of the chief of police's decision. And five, who authorized this agenda item, who requested it, what is wrong with the current process and what is the justification for changing it? Uh, 
uh, next uh, comment that we got was from Jim Gottinger, uh, Lake Geneva City Council. I understand that the shared services agreement with the town of Bloomfield is on your agenda tonight. I want you to understand that I and both boards of the Lake Geneva Schools, Badger and Joint One, wholeheartedly support this agreement, which will put in motion long overdue installation of traffic lights on Bloomfield Road and Highway 120. At this time, we are social distancing, distancing self-quarantining, and facing new challenges with tomorrow's Safer at Home Directive. Safety has certainly been elevated as a primary driving force in our lives. With that, the everyday, <clears throat> year in and year out, safety of our local citizens should remain as one of our highest priorities. Many have recognized the need to get traffic control at 120 in Bloomfield. This is a dangerous intersection that many of our citizens face every day. From a school's perspective, our buses, our youngest drivers from the high school, and parents transporting their children encounter the dangers here every day. Two churches also share concerns with this intersection as the growing population of Symphony Bay adds to the pressure and slippery slope of the safety of this intersection. Many have worked for years to champion action taken at this intersection. Please don't delay any longer moving this project forward. When safety is such a high priority, this is one controllable action you can take to protect us from a hazardous situation. Thank you. Uh, next is from Barb Phillips, um, stating, Dear Mayor, a stoplight is needed at Edwards Boulevard and Bloomfield Road. Drivers include a high rate of seniors and high school students. That is an interesting combination of skill set at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Thank you, Barb Phillips. Um, next is Katrina Lubinsky. Um, I definitely feel there should be a stoplight at Edwards and Bloomfield. Um, it's really hard to turn the pages when you can't move your finger. <laughs> the next is from Elizabeth Lupo DeVito. Um, she agrees, saying, thanks, we have been needing this for years. Uh, the next is from Marcy Holman. Um, it says, Lake Geneva City Council, as a 30-year resident of Lake Geneva at 1566 Orchard Lane in Lake Geneva, I strongly support installing a traffic light at Bloomfield Road and Highway 120. I know speed limits are posted on Highway 120, but they seem to be ignored. I serve on our local school board, and we all have great concerns for our students and anyone trying to cross Highway 120. It is so dangerous. Our school districts and Emanuel Lutheran Church have been asking for help from the city of Lake Geneva for years. This is in the best interest of our students, families, and the whole community. Go Lake Geneva. Uh, thank you for taking up this issue. Uh, next is from Janet Gia. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Hartz, uh, I am not a Lake Geneva resident, but I serve as the town of Geneva representative on the Badger High School board. Our board feels a stoplight at Bloomfield and Edwards is absolutely essential for the safety of all students and the caregivers who transport them. Next is from Jane Hand. Says, I definitely think there should be a traffic light at Edwards Boulevard and Bloomfield Road. It is an extremely dangerous intersection, and I'm surprised that there have not been more fatal car accidents. Next is from Charlene Klein. My comments are in regard to item number 16A. I'm quite pleased with the proposal presented for the Topsy Turvy Brewing Building. Given that the structure is adjacent to the historic Maple Park District, it is especially important that the historic elements have been retained. I would encourage the council to approve this plan so Mr. Should um, can continue to continue the improvement of the property. Normally I would present these comments in person, however, looking forward, I feel that it is especially critical to safeguard health at this time. Yes. Um, next is from Judy Markey. Uh, stoplight on Edwards and Bloomfield is necessary. Trying to cross is dangerous since traffic is heavy and often times there is speeding. Next is from Erin O'Leary. I believe that a traffic light should be placed at the intersection of Edwards Boulevard and Bloomfield Road. This is something that I think is imperative to driver safety. It can be very dangerous to find safe times to make any of the left-hand turns at this intersection. With school traffic at different times of the day being quite high, which include new drivers from the high school, I think that a light would allow for much safer travel through the area. Thank you for your consideration. And the final one is from Marie Collins. 
As a rolling Lane Lake Geneva resident, Badger High School employee, and grandmother of a child at the Emanuel Lutheran Daycare Center, I use the intersection being discussed tonight daily, sometimes often. It is tricky at best, even for an experienced driver, not to mention the new drivers coming from Badger before and after school. Between the slower southbound traffic speeding up to 45 to those exceeding the speed limit, those attempting to turn in any direction and trying to get across the intersection, it is difficult to navigate the intersection at any time. Adding school or church traffic and high volume of vehicles trying to get through the intersection at those times, it can be a very long wait, causing many to become impatient and attempt less than safe maneuver maneuvering, which all too often ends in an accident. It is surprising that no one has been killed there yet. Please provide the needed stoplight for the safety of our community and kids.